We often receive any variety of communications via email. Sometimes it's just a quick comment or note. Other times what we receive requires us to do something. We can use follow-up flags if we need to read or reply to those types of messages. But what if what someone is talking about necessitates actually meeting with them, whether it be face-to-face -face or virtually? Well, that takes on a whole other set of possible logistics that need to be attended to, from making sure that we schedule a time when everyone can attend, to notifying those people of the meeting, including time, place, and possibly even topics to be discussed, and then arranging for resources like projectors or catering. For many of us, just finding an available room can be the biggest challenge. Outlook has actually provided meeting tools for a long time, but Outlook 2013 gives us a shortcut that we can use to help make the process of converting an email to a meeting with just a few clicks. It's through the meeting option we now have on the home tab in the respond group. When we use this command, all of the recipients of the currently selected message are added as attendees to the meeting. An email reply is created, but it's actually a meeting invite, and all we need to do is set a few options, like the date and time, to be ready to go. Now, we need to understand how Outlook manages meetings. Like so much in Outlook, a meeting invitation is sent out via email to all of the recipients, who are also now referred to as attendees. Each person will receive the invite as an incoming email. They will have the option to accept, decline, or tentatively accept the meeting. It's just like using a voting button. If they accept or tentatively accept, the meeting is automatically added to their calendar at the correct date and time. Outlook will even adjust if they're on a different time zone than the original meeting organizer. The time is also marked as busy or tentative, depending on which they choose. If they decline, on the other hand, then nothing happens with their own calendar. But regardless which response is selected, an email is also generated back to the meeting organizer. That email simply indicates which response the attendee has selected. Those responses are tallied on the meeting organizer's calendar for easy reference and follow-up. All of this happens by the organizer simply sending the meeting request and the recipients simply clicking on the appropriate response. The rest is automated by Outlook, and that means it's easy. There's no composing responses. There's no having to open our own calendar and enter information and hoping we don't have any typos. It's all automatic. All of that can occur using this simple meeting option that we now have available on the ribbon. We also can create a meeting by simply opening a calendar item and clicking or tapping the Invite Attendees option that's available in the ribbon. Both generate a meeting request. Sometimes we may want to check everyone's schedule before they select a date and time, and Outlook has tools to help us identify that as well. So let's go ahead and give the Meeting option a click or a tap. This opens up the email, as I promised. We can see that it is addressed to everyone who received the initial message, in this case, Aaron and Susan. The subject is the same as the subject of the original email, which we could change if we wanted to. Normally for a meeting, we would want to enter a location, so we'll go ahead and do that now. We all know that retreats never occur in boring places. They're always in some place nice, so we'll put in a nice resort hotel. We can then add or adjust the date and time as appropriate, and we could also add a message at the bottom of the screen. The original email is also included to help people identify exactly what this meeting is about. If we know a good date and time, then we certainly can just set it and go on with it. But Outlook provides a couple of tools that will help us with this as well. First of all, all the way over on the right-hand side, we do have a Room Finder tool. If your organization is using this, it shows us a little calendar that shows us when the best times are to find an available room. And it simply rates them as good, fair, and poor. We don't currently have any configured, so choosing an available room simply says none, but normally you would see all of your conference rooms or other rooms available. At the bottom of this panel, we also see a tool where Outlook is going out and checking with Exchange Server and trying to recommend good times. For example, it says from 8 to 8.30, there are currently no conflicts. This again allows us to very quickly check and see what other people are doing. Since we only have two attendees, that may not be an issue. If you have 10 or 100, you're probably going to have conflicts. And that's when you can use a tool called the Scheduling Assistant. The Scheduling Assistant is actually available up on the ribbon. When we click or tap on the Scheduling Assistant, the screen's going to change from the email to more of a grid-like fashion. It's going to list all of the attendees along the left-hand side. If we need to add more people, we can simply click and type their name, just like addressing an email. If we're not sure how to address them, then we can go to the bottom left and click or tap the option that says Add Attendees. As we said, it's just like email, so we can use any one of our address books, the global address list, or even our contacts 
to add people to the list. Notice that unlike an email that usually has two CC and BCC, a meeting allows us to designate people as required, optional, and resources. In this case, it's saying that Aaron is required and Susan is optional. If that's not correct and Susan needs to be there, we can remove her from optional, select her from up above, and click or tap the required option. When we're finished addressing, we can simply click or tap OK to return to the scheduling assistant. What the scheduling assistant really does is it shows us each person's free busy time. We can now look at the grid in the middle of the screen. Anybody that has anything blocked out will be shown as busy or out of office. Otherwise, we're just looking for open times. If we need help finding an open time, we can use one of the tools that we find from the Options command, which is on the bottom left next to the Add Attendees button. From here, we can say Only Show My Working Hours to avoid scheduling things in off hours. We can show Calendar Details. We can refresh the free busy time if they may have updated it since we started. But most importantly, there is also an Auto Pick function. Now, this is going to go out and find the best first available time for everyone. For two or three people, that may be great. For 10 or 20, it may be next year. So we do have the opportunity to auto pick, but we also have to realize that it may give us something that just isn't reasonable. When we use auto pick, we can choose for all people and resources, all people and one resource, just the required people, or the required people and one resource. We also can choose an earlier time. We'll go ahead and say that we would like to have all people and resources, and it designates a time of Tuesday at 4 a.m. Well, that's really not what we want. So in this case, we'll just manually set our time. It is a retreat. We knew that we wanted to have it in March. So we'll go ahead and set a weekend, perhaps the 8th through the 10th. And we're not going to start at 4 a.m. We'll give it a little bit more of a reasonable time, maybe 8 a.m. through 4 p.m. on Sunday. Because that time now spans a much longer time, we may need to adjust our view. We can do that at the top of the screen, just above where everyone is listed. Instead of looking at 100%, maybe we need to bring that down to only seeing things at 50%. Now we can see that the actual meeting time is designated in the shaded area with the solid blue lines at the start and the end time. We also again can see that currently nobody has anything scheduled over that weekend. So that is a good time to set where currently everybody should be available. The last thing to consider is if our organization does have rooms designated, we can choose the Add Rooms option at the bottom left of the screen. These are really entered or created basically like a contact record in Exchange. We use them to find when rooms and other resources are available. Because they're created just like a person, a room has a calendar. So by adding them to our meeting, we can check and see when a room is available versus being busy or occupied. I know in many facilities, finding a room, much less the room that they really want, can be the most difficult part of scheduling a meeting. So this feature is really helpful, and it's really easy for IT to initially set it up. Once we take a look and make sure that we have all of the right people invited, and they're either required or optional, and that we've added any resources that we need, like rooms, and scheduled a time that is best, it may not always be perfect, but at least it has most of the required people available, then we're ready to go ahead and complete setting up the meeting. We can simply click the Send option on the upper left of the screen. If we want to go back and look at the actual email, we can click or tap the Appointment option in the Show group to return to the email itself. We can add any of the other usual Outlook calendar options to this meeting, but when we're done, instead of clicking Save and Close, we'll click Send. The invite has been sent off to all the attendees, whether there's one or a hundred of them. Then we just have to wait for the attendees to reply and let Outlook do its thing as far as gathering those responses and tallying them up. In the meantime, what we notice is if we go back to our own calendar as the meeting organizer and scroll to find the date that is appropriate, we can see that our meeting has been added to our calendar already. Naturally, as the meeting organizer, we hope that we'll be attending our own meeting. 